Good morning. This morning I'm going to be talking to you about decimals. So I've started with a hundred square to help us start to understand what a decimal is. So if we take this hundred square and we imagine this square as one whole, so the number one. So this square from one to a hundred is the number one. As you can see, to make the number one, we need to have 100 pieces, okay? So each of these pieces are called hundredths. So this is one hundredth, this is also a hundredth, and this is a hundredth, okay? So if I was to ask you what is 27 one hundredths, we would need to count each square. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. I can't remember if I said 26 or 27. So this is 27 hundredths, okay? If we were to write this, and I'll show you how we'll write it on a place value grid. So this is 27, one, 27 one hundredths. As a fraction, this would be 27 over 100. So 27 hundredths is the same as 27 over 100, okay? To write this as a decimal, we need to use our place value chart. So we all know that our place value chart normally runs from, I'll put my hundreds column here. Got your hundreds, your tens, your units. Now, when we get below our units column, this is when we begin to have our decimal number. So I'm gonna draw in my decimal here. So in this column, all the way, no matter how many examples I put underneath, the decimal point will always be after the units. Then we have our columns afterwards. Now these columns have different names that sound quite similar to the ones before the decimal point. This column is known as the tenths, tenths, this is the hundredths, and this is the thousandths. Now, as you can see, these place value headings are all in small letters. The hundreds, tens and units over here are all capital letters. So that's how we tell the difference. So we said that we had 27 hundredths. So we don't have any holes. We don't have one hole at all. So we've got zero holes, but we do have 27 hundredths. Now to write this or this in the place value grid, we would write it like so. 27 hundredths. This is the hundredths column. There are seven hundredths. And this is saying that we have two tenths. Well, let's have a look at our hundred square. As you can see, the top two rows have been completely coloured in. And one row coloured in like this is one tenth because 10 hundredths makes one tenth. So because in our 27, we have two full rows, we say we have two tenths. And as we can see here, that's exactly what we've written. We've got two tenths because we've got two full columns and left over, we have seven hundredths on that row on its own. Now, because it doesn't go up to 30, there's not three tenths, because we've not made it to the 30 yet. So we have seven hundredths left over. Now, as you can see on my place value chart, that is exactly what I have found here. I've got two tenths and seven hundredths, which can also be read as 27 hundredths, okay? We're just breaking up the 27 hundredths into different parts. I'm gonna show you another example, okay? I'm going to just continue my place value chart so that I don't have to draw another one. My decimal always stays in the same place. 
And I'm just going to extend these. We don't tend to use thousandths very often, but we can. That's why we have that column there. Okay, so let's try another example. Let's go back to our hundreds. I'll just reset it for us. So for this example, let's say we have 14 hundredths. So we count along 14 individual squares. Okay, so we've got 14 hundredths. So if we write that down in words, we have 14 hundredths. Now, if you have a look back at our 100 square, you can see we have coloured in one full row of hundredths. That means we have one tenth. And left over, we have four hundredths. So to put that into our place value chart, we've got no full numbers yet. We've got one tenth and four hundredths. So we can say here that we've got fourteen hundredths or one tenth and four hundredths. Now again, as a fraction, that would be 14 out of 100 were coloured in. So because 14 out of 100 were coloured in, that means we've got 14 hundredths. But as you can see, when we write that in, it means we've got one tenth and four hundredths, like so. So that's what that looks like at a decimal. Now, just now, I'm going to um, give you, colour in some of these squares, and I'll give you a few moments to try and write it as a decimal. And then we'll share the answers. So for this one, I'm going to color in this many hundredths. Okay, this many hundredths. So I would like you, like I have, I would like you to write that as a fraction. Can you write it in words? And can you write it as a decimal? And you can copy these headings if you need to. So I'm just going to flip back to our number square. So can you write this as a fraction? Can you tell me how many hundredths there are? Can you tell me how many of these are tenths and how many of these are hundredths? Okay, I'll leave that there for a second for you to try. Okay, the next one, I'm just going to reset this and we'll go over all the answers at the end. So this time, I'm going to colour in for you this many. So can you write me this many as a fraction? Can you tell me how many tenths there are and how many hundredths? And can you write that in your place value grid as well for me? So I'll show you again. Can you write it as a fraction? Can you write it as a hundredths? And can you write it as tenths and hundredths? And then finally, can you pop it into your place value grid? So this is how many we've coloured in for this one. Okay, and the last one I'm going to get you to do I'm going to colour in this many. So again, can you write that as a fraction? Can you write that as hundredths? Can you tell me how many tenths and how many hundredths? 
And can you fill it in on your place value grid? Okay, this is the last one. Can you tell me how many hundredths I have now? Can you write it as a fraction? Can you tell me how many tens and how many hundredths there are? And can you write it in your place value grid? Okay, so let's go over those together. So our first one was 43 hundredths that we'd coloured in. So to write that, we've got 43 hundredths. As you could see from when that was coloured in, there were four full column, four full rows coloured in. So that means we had four tenths. And we had three left over. So those were three hundredths. As a fraction, we would write that as 43 over 100. Now on our place value grid, we have no holes, but we have 4 tenths and 3 hundredths. So on our place value chart, this would look like this. Okay, number two, that was 50. Now this one's a bit more tricky. So we have 50 hundredths coloured in. And when you looked... That was five full rows, so there were five tenths. There weren't any left over, so there were zero hundredths. As a fraction, this is 50 over 100. And if you simplify this, this is actually a half. On our place value grid, we know that we've got zero whole numbers, we've got five tenths, and we've got zero hundredths. Now, it's not important to write that zero because the zero doesn't change the number. But if it helps you, then you can write in the zero. You could just have it as 0 0.5 and nothing else. For number three, we had 22. So that was 22 hundredths. Which was two tenths. And two hundredths. As a fraction, we have 22 over 100, which we could simplify down to 11 over 50. Because we know we have got two tenths and two hundredths, we can fill in our place value grid. No holes, but we have two tenths and two hundredths. So as a fraction, that's what that looks like. Our final example was eight hundredths. There were only eight squares colored in. Now, if we split this up, we didn't have any full coloured rows. So that means we had zero tenths. But we did have eight squares coloured in. And each square represented one hundredth. So we had zero tenths and eight hundredths. As a fraction, this would simply be eight hundred, which you could simplify down. This means... We have zero tenths and zero eight and eight hundredths. So when we fill out our place value chart this time, we have zero units. We have zero tenths and eight hundredths. So this zero is very, very important because it shows us we don't have any tenths. If this zero was not here, we may confuse it. We may confuse this eight for a tenth and change the value of the number. OK, so hopefully that's been helpful. And hopefully, if you need to, you can get a few more examples online. And if you've got any further questions, then please let me know.